Let's talk about what all the hype is about. You'll see in green on my weekly chart I have an upward channel and this channel I identified I think it was in July actually shortly after the June run. What I did was connect the two peaks from January and June and then drew a parallel line and base it off of the low we saw in early January. That channel could have been drawn as soon as the retracement was complete from the run in June. And as you can see, the blue symmetrical triangle has encountered that trend. The price has fallen below it, and now it has reached up above the symmetrical triangle and back into the channel. Let me zoom in and show you what that looks like on the daily chart. Doesn't that just look beautiful? It's a wonderful double bottom shaping up. And you'll see this green candle at the end of this run. That does not look too shabby to me. You'll see I had a breakout date right here. It was the 4th, which was yesterday. And I thought we might, we might have seen that breakout on the 3rd. We didn't see it on the 4th, but you can see that there was a test. And today could be lift off. At this point in time, it is realistic to see one of the price targets that I've calculated be achieved in a relatively short amount of time. Maybe one, maybe two weeks. Stay to the end of the video and I'm going to share my Fibonacci time series. So stay tuned for that. Now, addressing these price levels, the blue symmetrical triangle has an upper price target of 5404, which is basically going to confirm a double bottom. And that double bottom has a target of $80.18. Along the way, there might be some pause, some consolidation around the falling wedge target, which has been revised to 63.62. The falling wedge is shown in gray here, and the symmetrical triangle forms here. And the ugly double bottom is actually both patterns. What's different from my patterns than those you see on Reddit are these, that the consolidation, the downward trend from, the June's, from June's high was a falling wedge. My symmetrical triangle does not try to capture all the price action from June. And as you can see, it's proven to be very useful in calculating minor peaks, minor lows. And now I'm hoping that this breakout signal is also reliable. And my double bottom is incorporating both patterns into one larger pattern. This form of analysis, this pattern analysis, is proving to be far more reliable than what I've seen on Reddit. Here I'm showing the upward channel. There's a lot of hype on Reddit speculating that the next run will reach the top of the channel. That would be in the upper to mid $300 range, which can happen. I'm not going to say that's not, that's not going to happen. I do want to say though that I expect the top of this channel to act as a point of resistance more than anything else. Bulkowski provides buy and sell signals for channels, but we don't speculate what price will be based on the trend of the channel. Now the 4 hour chart is very exciting. You'll see that there's, there's a downward channel in pink and today the price closed above this channel. Per Bulkowski's analysis, this would be a buy signal from the channel. And given what I just saw on the daily and weekly charts, that seems to be the rational decision based on Bulkowski's analysis. The 15 minute chart has seen some revisions. The flag I had shown is proving to not be a flag and more so resembles a pennant. What's interesting is that pennant appears to be breaking out currently. Whether or not this rally continues remains to be seen, but Monday morning should give us a clue. I see multiple patterns signaling a breakout on multiple time frames. And finally, the one minute chart. I made a Reddit post today and I updated it, explaining what I was thinking as I did this chart. Now, some of these lines I'm not gonna keep in my daily chart because they aren't super productive. They were good for the, the intraday trading, but now I'm just going to delete them. You'll see in blue here an upward channel, and this started at the end of last week, the beginning of this week, and it's proven to be a good area of support. 
a couple of different times. Today the price flirted a lot with a 38.2% retracement level and then yesterday's peak for at $41.30. Volume overall for the day wasn't super, super high, but breakouts don't have to occur on high volume. Now that you've watched through my video, I'm going to share my Fibonacci time series. Not as many people are going to see this, so congratulations. I don't typically share this because it's pretty speculative, and it's my own study. It's not a Bukowski study. So I try to keep it to myself because it's a little less well-founded. It's, it's just simple observation. Now, how I came up with this study is indirect. I wasn't looking for time periods or intervals between runs. I was not looking for that. What I was doing was studying minor lows, their minor highs, and how those Fibonacci retracements came into play. All right, so I've got it all blacked out, but there's one. But I drew a line to mark it, and I wanted to show the bottom to the top of that run. And I did the same here in Cyan. And then I thought about doing it back here. And as soon as I did, I said to myself, wouldn't a time marker somewhere back here, here and here, kind of have a Fibonacci look to it? And so I just measured it. I said, hey, it looks kind of like this. It's observable. I'm not looking for it, but I see it. Let's check it. And so I took a Fibonacci time study, and I set the length of that study until those two those two minor lows fell on two points within the time series. And when I did that, I found that the minor low, the minor low that preceded the big run in June also fell on one of these points, namely the beginning. So there was a Fibonacci time ratio between minor lows and then those runs can occur at any point between in, in between. I thought that was really interesting. I've heard a lot of people trying to time the runs. But what if the key was to actually time the dips? So I took minor lows, but significant lows prior to runs, i.e. not every low counts. I said, OK, that's interesting. Given that the, the wave form from June to present looks similar from January to June, I wonder if a similar time ratio existed. Obviously, the full length of time is different, which is why I don't believe in taking one part of the chart, stretching it out, and then making it fit onto another. But if the time ratio is aligned, that is legitimate. So I, I applied the same theory from January to June. And you'll notice right away that the 78.6 period, that that's where the Fibonacci study lines up where it repeats. When I did this, the beginning of, of this series was back here, almost right on the money from the all-time low of 191. And I said, there is something there. And I, I, I've just been sitting on this information, waiting to see if it's been going to prove relevant, because I didn't have this information until probably just a couple weeks ago. Here's the 78.6 point Fibonacci time level, whatever you want to call it. It's November 9th, all right? Essentially, what this study suggests is that we're at this yellow line. If you were to compare the first half of this year to the last half of this year, there appears to be a pivot point here. I am getting an inkling that something that if there's going to be another big run, that it's going to be very, very soon.